After years of favorable macroeconomic conditions, Africa finds itself at a pivotal juncture, grappling with shifting geopolitical fault lines, climate challenges, and the disruptive force of artificial intelligence. Against this backdrop, the 11th annual Africa CEO Forum, slated for May 16th and 17th in Kigali, Rwanda, presents a critical opportunity for the continent to shape its future trajectory. The forum will delve into four key transformative agendas aimed at addressing pressing issues and charting a course towards sustainable growth and prosperity for Africa. And for the second time, Rwanda is hosting the Africa CEO Forum spearheaded by the Rwanda Development Board after hosting one in 2019. Welcome to this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. And speaking of business, today we bring you insights about the largest gathering of business minds in Africa as they convene for Africa CEO Forum this week in Kigali. And joining us now is Adrian Fielding, the director of ACF, and I'm your host, Flora Limuki. So this year, the agenda is uh, really focused and influenced by external uh, dynamics. So following two decades of global growth, uh, as everyone will have noticed, geopolitical fault lines globally have, have deepened really rapidly. Climate change and AI disruptions are being felt daily by communities and businesses everywhere. But uh, amid this basically shift in the paradigm, Africa really stands at a crossroads. And that's our main theme this year, that there is a true question is, will African nations unite and claim a place at the decision-making table, or will the continent be on the menu in an increasingly sort of vicious competition for, for capital, primary, and human resources? Um, so that's the theme of this year, and, and we really hope to bring together uh, the private sector and public sector decision-makers to decide how they can align and uh, harmonize their narratives, harmonize their action plan for charting a new future for Africa. Um, and, um, and we intend to do that through sort of four key agendas where we believe uh, the, the, the battle will be won or lost. That's looking, taking a long, hard look at ourselves in terms of governance. Um, that's corporate and political governance and a renewal. Um, then waking up to the technological shift, and, and, and that's, like, that's necessary yesterday, um, waking up to the shift that technology will, will have on the continent and being at the forefront. Um, thirdly, it'll be now truly a, a push to truly integrate further. The political uh, players can, can, can only do so much. We really need uh, sort of African integrated businesses, uh, regional players and African champions uh, to, 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 to compel uh, intra-African trade. And then finally, financing, that's the obvious one where um, in such a tough financial environment globally, um, perhaps it's time to look internally and, um, and look at uh, what domestic resources can be mobilized uh, better. So those are, those are how we're going to address uh, the, the issues at hand. And of course, these conversations come uh, at the backdrop of the outcome of the previous Africa CEO forum that was held. Perhaps you could talk to us a little bit about the outcomes of the uh, last Africa CEO forum and what progress has been made in terms of what was uh, then uh, discussed at the end of that forum. So um, last year's forum uh, was very much focused on projecting African influence beyond Africa's borders. And the way to do that being to leverage uh, what we called uh, the African champions, effectively, the billion dollar revenue African companies. Um, so you can think of the likes of Echo Bank, uh, you think of the likes of Access Holdings, you think of the likes of, of, of OCP. Um, and those are really the sort of the, the champions of Africa abroad. Um, and um, and uh, we, we believe they're important basically to convey an African, the African business narrative beyond Africa's borders. How, what the impact has been of that, I actually think that the, um, that uh, Africa's representation at, um, at international uh, events such as COP28 was fairly large. I think there's a long, long way to go, but um, the African private sector was, had its largest delegation at COP28 um, ever. 
and um, and that's something we want to build on. Um, it's already great progress, but um, uh, just being in the room doesn't it doesn't do the job. We need to be we need them to be heard as well. Yeah, and when we look at uh, the last few years or the last one year specifically, uh, there has been a lot going on within the African countries, including the geopolitical pressures and also the weakening shilling in different parts of uh, different countries in Africa. Therefore, how is this uh, forum a position to reinstate the confidence for investors who want to put in their money in Africa? Well, we pride ourselves um, on the fact that we are the Africa CEO Forum and truly what we do is we convene Africa's captains of industry. There's true African corporate excellence. Um, all, like every single one of our 2,000 participants is, is, is someone worth knowing. And of them, there's 1,000 CEOs of genuine executive heads of uh, corporate entities. Um, and so uh, we have only um, had very positive feedback and lots of deals sprung out of foreign organizations which come uh, to the Africa CEO Forum, um, uh, foreign financiers or strategic investors or, 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 or multinationals who find partners at the Africa CEO Forum uh, because there's, 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 there's so many to choose from. Um, so in that sense, the Africa CEO Forum is a great window into um, uh, into African corporate sort of into African corporate excellence. Yeah. And talk to us a little bit about uh, the conversations around climate change uh, within the forum and what is it uh, specifically? Because we've been having these conversations for long, but really right now it feels like it's a moment to move from uh, this conversation to actually solution based conversations about the issues of climate change and climate mitigation within Africa. Um, so absolutely, I think that's a that's a really important discussion to be had, um, simply because there are more than one African voice when it comes to climate change. There, uh, the African Climate Summit last year was really great at at convening uh, several perspectives on the matters of of uh, loss and damage, um, but in terms of uh, global expectations of African. Uh, energy demand. Uh, I think that is just a message that needs to be hammered home again and again and again. Uh, the African private sector and the African continent is going to grow uh, in prosperity. It's going to grow in energy demand as a result. And, and basically, no low energy country has ever achieved prosperity. So it's clearly uh, uh, an obvious issue that needs to be addressed here. So what our main message here is that the African private sector, African business, needs to be able to uh, convey that message by having a seat at the decision-making table, just like major multinationals from other parts of the world um, are um, are given a are given a say and given a voice at large major like major international climate uh, events and summits. Um, the African private sector should should as well. That's that's our position on that. Um, I think there is a. a a unity to be achieved if there's change to be achieved. And uh, it comes with a narrative, uh, a narrative push and a, a mentality shift, which hasn't been heard and recognized uh, beyond African borders yet. What are, are some of the conversations that will be dominating when it comes to matters financing and specifically focusing on Africa being able to actually finance most of its project apart from depending on um, probably borrowing loans from uh, the Western parts of the country and other uh, global uh, sectors. Yeah, absolutely. So clearly in a high interest rate environment, uh, as it is today, uh, borrowing is, is, is even less um, attractive. Uh, so we, we, we absolutely are um, financing and financiers are a very large part of this forum. Uh, a large proportion of the, of the let's say, 25% of foreign participants uh, our uh, development finance institutes, our large strategic investors, uh, our large multinationals who are looking to make investments. So we really encourage um, uh, long-term investments in the continent. A second element of that is um, obviously um, uh, domestic uh, institutional capital mobilization, which is which is perhaps um, in the last year and a half to two years a key focus and, and will be at the summit this year. Um, is that the idea that African 
pension funds, African sovereign wealth funds, African um, insurance funds uh, should deploy greater proportions of their savings uh, into African um, bankable projects. Um, and that brings me to the third point, which is bankable projects. We have um, lots of African actors uh, represented here um, who uh, are in the job of preparing projects for investment. And that's the third element here. None of this can happen if a project is not bankable, if, if its feasibility study is not done, and if it's not de -risked. And so those are the three elements that we're, we're, we're really looking at here. And uh, Adrian, as we wrap up, what are some of the potential outcomes th that you expect from uh, this forum this year? So we are really hoping that we can, um, most importantly, in everyone comes here to, 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 to network. So what we do is we create, we convene amongst captains of excellence, uh, captains of industry and, 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 and true sort of corporate excellence and, and, uh, and the public sector as well as with some 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 development actors um, to create partnerships which perhaps never would have been established. So crucially, uh, we bring a large delegation from uh, Francophone Africa to an, uh, to an Anglophone African country. Um, we have about 50-50 representation, which is which is rare in these summits across the continent. So I, I really hope that we basically create partnerships. Uh, but the second most important thing is I think um, the Hopefulness and the idea of uh, innovative ideas are out there uh, that we can we can we can propel growth through uh, new industries such as sports and with new actors such as philanthropic actors. Um, there are always new ways out there, and those need to be identified by Africa for Africa, um, and that's really what this is intended to, to to facilitate. So we hope to see lots of investment deals come out of it, but also. A bit of a narrative shift, I, as I said, for even almost advocacy uh, beyond African borders to show that Africa is, um, is ready to take its place at the decision-making table. This 11th edition of the Africa CEO Forum presents an opportunity to promote Kigali as a place of choice for major international conferences, create a platform for dialogue between the private sector and government, and also give an opportunity for business executives and government to discuss how each can collaborate to make successful business ventures and contribute to the economic development. So mark your calendars on May 16th and 17th. The Africa CEO Forum convenes for its 11th annual summit, bringing together 2,000 business leaders, CEOs, investors, head of states and ministers. Stay tuned on CNBC Africa as we provide live coverage from the event. Goodbye for now.